All right, so here's the thing. Oftentimes we find ourselves pretty busy. We're going to and from work, we're going to and from different projects. And the funny thing is, is that technology nowadays has become so portable and we spend so much time on other screens other than the main computer that we would have at work that it often seems like we're kind of doubling up on, on how much uh, tech we've got around us. So in order to simplify things, I thought to myself, wouldn't it be cool if I could see how much of my day-to-day -day work I could actually get done inside a web browser instead of having to use a, uh, you know, instead of having to use a full-on operating system. I'm kind of not limited then as to where I work, when I work, uh, because it's not limited to any specific machine. Now, obviously, I know there are going to be things that you physically can't do uh, outside of, uh, you know, outside of a full-on rig like video editing or architectural drawings or that kind of thing. And I'm not talking about that sort of stuff, although there are some pretty interesting developments there too but there is a surprising amount of stuff that you can do inside a web browser so this series is going to be all about working in a web browser okay so first a few parameters uh, so today's video is going to be about productivity tools um, at least the productivity side of things of working inside a web browser and um, and throughout the series I'm going to use different operating systems and possibly even different machines depending on what I can get my hands on to kind of demonstrate the the viability of, of working in a web browser so um, here we are elementary OS Loki um, and we've got Google Chrome as the web browser that we are going to be using across all of these different systems because you know what what? Google Chrome is the best uh, cross-platform um, in terms of syncing all of that kind of thing it works the best with uh, with this idea of web apps and web services so what we're going to do first um, now I will address right out the start here that depending on what email service you use obviously email is a big part of people's uh, you know work life and, uh, and I understand that. So it, it's honestly going to depend on what particular email service you're using. So between Gmail and Outlook and Yahoo and all those other ones, um, there's plenty of scope there. And honestly, all the cloud-based email clients are pretty decent. Okay, moving on to the more interesting stuff. Let's talk about productivity and to-do lists. So for me, uh, Wonderlist is, uh, has been the go-to um, the go-to project management or to-do list app for me personally. Um, now, unfortunately, Wonderlist uh, has been kind of put out to pasture, as it were. Um, it's a wonderful free service, cross-platform, you can get apps on everything, but the web app is actually really good as well. Now, it has been succeeded by Microsoft To Do, so that's why I'm gonna also um, give some other options here as well. But in terms of a free app that, uh, that can help you manage your projects and also uh, allows scope for inviting other people into those projects, Wonderlist is a brilliant option. So as you can see here, there's like a lot of stuff that I use um, Wonderlist for, and it's and it's very very versatile. So you can share lists with other people, um, and in terms of uh, sort of the local functionality of uh, being able to print out a list and that kind of thing, there is right click functionality in here as well, which is awesome. Okay, so moving on to the second recommendation then, if you're not a huge fan of uh, Wonderlist, or at least you're a little bit concerned like I am that it uh, might be going out to tender pretty soon, Todoist is the next option there. So Todoist, again, uh, very cross-platform, got apps and services everywhere. And again, the Chrome web app is actually pretty stellar. Um, so again, it's focused on getting stuff done, keeping you on task. And if I had to change to any particular to-do list right now today, it would probably be Todoist. Um, so yeah, sign in for those accounts. They're free in their basic tiers and obviously they go pricey. Uh, as uh, as you move up in the business world. Okay, so then we also have uh, Trello. Now Trello is a uber powerful tool for project management across a team. Now if you haven't heard of Trello, then definitely go and check it out. But Trello is a cards-based productivity system. So basically, it's all centered around projects and each of those projects and each of those different subtasks within those projects get their own uh, card. And then as the project uh, goes on, you can add more, you can add comments, you can delegate things out to different team members. Trello is a huge part of uh, how a lot of workplaces uh, do things nowadays. So between Trello and Asana is another app uh, system, but Trello starts out as a free 
uh, as a free app. And again, if you want to expand it, you can uh, you know you can start paying some money for it. But uh, just how versatile this uh, this app is when it comes to project management and overall productivity, getting stuff done, it's one of the best ways to collaborate remotely with a group of people. Um, so. And it even integrates with um, what has become the standard in terms of team communication uh, internally, which of course being Slack. Um, but it integrates with a bunch of other things as well, whether it's cloud storage or um, or you know even GitHub stuff like that. So um, so yeah, really productivity focused. It's one of the best services out there. So get on board that. If uh, if you don't know what it is, then definitely see how you might be able to make it fit. You could save yourself a lot of time and headache by using at least one of these uh, particular. Um, project management systems. Okay, let's move on. All right, next we're going to talk about note taking. So note taking is uh, really comes down to one of two options in my opinion. You've got Evernote and you've got OneNote. Now, for me personally, I love using OneNote. Um, I was an Evernote user for a long, long time, but OneNote stole the show for me when it came to overall features, uh, just how much stuff you could collect in OneNote, and uh, and even in the last year, the apps for OneNote have become amazing on mobile and that kind of thing. Um, now, when it comes to working in a web browser, uh, OneNote is still very, very much uh, open to whatever you want to do with it. You can, um, you know, interact with uh, graphics and um, web clippings and all that kind of thing, um, and it does translate very well to just being an overall information dump. So everything that you find, all the ideas that you have, you can dump them all into OneNote and it basically has cataloged my life over the last golly, probably uh, three years in all different areas, in uh, this channel, in, uh, in university, in work, uh, all of these different things. Basically OneNote is the hub of my digital life. And um, so yeah, definitely, highly recommend OneNote, um, but obviously Evernote does exist as well. I think the reason why I've steered away from Evernote is just because it seems as time has gone on, they've kind of lost focus a little bit on uh, on what's important to them. It has become a bit more expensive so that a lot of the, a lot of the functionality that you used to get for free um, is now sort of locked behind a paywall. So you do need to, so you do need to pay that premium. Uh, for that uh, for that subscription. So it's still a wonderful, wonderful service um, and its integration across the web is pretty unparalleled. Um, but yeah, at the same time, uh, for me, OneNote, um, OneNote achieves basically the same amount of stuff uh, without, without the paywall. So yeah, so definitely for note-taking between Evernote and OneNote, you've got plenty of options there. All right, so let's start bringing this into land because we are already running over time here. So um, between Office Suites, there are kind of two different options. You have Google Drive and you also have Microsoft Office Online. Google Drive is very, very helpful as well. I find Google Drive better for collaborating with other people and it's uh, so it's great for sharing ideas, um, for, for getting everyone working on the same document uh, pretty instantaneously. Now, while Office Online or Office 365 does do this, um, it's a little bit, I think it lags a little bit behind, but in terms of overall polish and, um, and publishing your document, it is gonna be super helpful for you to use um, the Microsoft Office Online because really that's, that's where it's at in terms of document compatibility and all of that fun stuff. Now the wonderful thing about both Google Drive and uh, you know Google Docs and those services as well as uh, Office Online is the fact that it integrates incredibly well with your existing cloud services. So whether you have a bunch of stuff uh, saved in Dropbox or uh, or in Google Drive or in OneDrive and stuff like that, uh, you can very easily link it to these various Office suites. Now in terms of compatibility, you can see here that it's not too bad, it's a little bit sketchy on the bullet points, but overall the compatibility with a uh, with Word and Word Online is pretty decent. Um, features wise, they're probably on par with each other. I'm not aware of any killer feature that Google Drive has over Office Online or vice versa. And also I will give an honorable mention to, uh, to the fact that now you can actually actually deploy LibreOffice, the, the free and open source Office suite in the cloud as well as a version 5.3. So while that is up to the actual uh, individual to deploy that and, uh, and there are um, there are businesses and services out there that help you with uh, deploying that, such as I believe it's called Collabora, um, and Collabora tie in with I think Nextcloud. 
and help you deploy LibreOffice in the cloud for um, you know for an individual company or business or that kind of thing. So um, so that's all very cool stuff. But at, for the average consumer, for what um, from what I'm going to be using on a day to day basis, I'm split between these two. They each have their strengths and weaknesses. So between Google Drive and between um, Office Online, you're pretty well set. Okay, finally, I want to touch on one final thing with productivity before we end this episode, and that is uh, remote access. So remote access is a huge deal um, when it comes to productivity because it does mean that you can kind of up and unplug from your office or from your main machine, but still have it accessible from wherever you are as long as you can access a web browser. And that is a courtesy of TeamViewer. Now TeamViewer is available as a web app in the Chrome Web Store. And any apps that you add from the Chrome Web Store um, will actually show up in your menu systems as well on your, on your system. So you can see, for example, that I've got Google Keep and Google Play Music and stuff like that, which I'll touch on, touch on those a little bit later. But those means that that's available offline for me to use. So then when I go into TeamViewer, I can actually use it almost as a native app, which is pretty ridiculous. Ridiculous. I can log in and then access uh, any computer remotely that I have attached to my TeamViewer account and uh, and use it as if it were my own PC. Now this is free license use um, for non-commercial use only. Um, so uh, again, it's up to you as to how that fits into your uh, ecosystem and into your workplace. But TeamViewer is an amazing option if you want to be able to work anywhere as if you are working at your own uh, work PC at your workstation, um, you can access uh, that through TeamViewer on a Chrome web browser. So that's pretty amazing. And that kind of wraps up um, the, the productivity section of working in a web browser. I think for me personally, I could get all my work done uh, from a productivity standpoint between an email client, whether um, at the moment it's kind of split between Outlook and Gmail, and, uh, and Wonderlist, Trello, OneNote, and, uh, and Google Drive and Office Online and the occasional use of TeamViewer. Between those things, I am covered from a productivity standpoint. Let me know in the comments what you think and, uh, and if you have any suggestions when it comes to productivity apps, services, and uh, options for, the, for working inside a web browser. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next episode and we'll talk about some graphic design, online creativity, all that fun stuff in, uh, in the next episode of Working in a Web Browser. Uh, if you liked this video, then obviously give it some thumbs and, uh, and then subscribe if you like this kind of content. And uh, yeah, you'll hear from me next time.